let's talk about seven ways to improve your bone health. Now, your peak bone density occurs in your late 20s. Personally, I'm right at this point where I have the peak bone density. Unfortunately, it's all downhill from here. But as you start getting older, you start losing the density of your bone and your bones become softer and softer and softer, especially for women after menopause because they get this huge drop in estrogen. And if you're going through menopause and you have a problem with the precursor for osteoporosis, which is osteopenia, I would recommend taking something called DHEA to help increase the precursor for these various hormones, including estrogen. And I would really only take uh, between 10 to 15 milligrams, not too much, because it can also increase testosterone. And we don't want to do that. We just want to make the uh, precursor for estrogen there uh, in case your body needs it to make a little bit more. All right. So the first thing to improve your bones is to start taking vitamin D3. I would recommend taking 10,000 IUs every single day. Now, if you have a major situation with osteoporosis, I would take more. I'd probably take 20 to 30,000 IUs of vitamin D3. And then number two, with that vitamin D3, you're also going to need K2. K2 is very, very important in bone. K2 works with vitamin D3. So vitamin D3 increases the absorption of calcium in the blood, but K2 takes that calcium and drives it right into the bone. If there's not enough vitamin K2, then calcium can tend to settle in the arteries as well in the joints. Now, as far as the amount of K2, I would use that as the ratio with D3. So if D3 is 10,000 I use, I would take a hundred micrograms of K2. And the type of K2 I would take is the MK7 version, not the MK4, the MK7. So if you're going to take 20,000 I use of D3, you would take 200 micrograms of K2. Make sense? Okay. Number three, I would take some organic grass-fed dairy, probably some cheese to get your calcium. That's one of the best sources of calcium. All right. Number four, um, increase your vegetables to get vitamin C. Vitamin C has everything to do with collagen and there's collagen in bone. There's collagen in connective tissue that surrounds bone. There's collagen in your joints. And so bone is not just about minerals. It's about protein and vitamin C and other minerals in the vegetables will help your bone. Also, the dark leafy greens are loaded with calcium. All right, number five, weight-bearing exercise is vitally important. You're going to add stress to the bone and your bone's going to actually adapt and get stronger from that stress. All right, next one is trace minerals. Very, very important, especially copper, manganese, zinc, all are needed for enzymes and certain proteins that help build bone. And number seven, one of the trace minerals, boron, is really needed to just to make the bone stronger. So you might want to take that as an extra thing. All right, there you have it, the seven ways to improve bone health. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan. Okay. If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies. 
with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.